Welcome back, guys. We are back with NFC 22. Today, we are talking with Free Gas uh, from Monstrosities. We've got our boy WT, you already know, uh, with the beautiful mustache. He's rocking. It's getting thicker and better every day. Uh, like I always say, one day it's going to turn into a butterfly. Like Caterpillar is going to turn into a butterfly, and he's going to fly away. So we have uh, Free Gas here from Monstrosities. And uh, WT, what is good? What is new? What you been up to this week? Talk to me before we get into this amazing podcast. Doing great, my friend. It's great to be back. I know we had a little low there and videos being kicked out. You were busy. I was busy. It's been a crazy week in the crypto markets, the NFT markets, and we're all just kind of hanging on by the skin of our teeth. But us veterans, we know how this goes. We've been through this before, and it's it's a it's a great opportunity to buy, to be honest with you. Not financial advice as always. And uh, looking really forward to this podcast with uh, the monstrosities today. Absolutely. Speaking of that, we have Free Gas. What is going on, my friend? Uh, why don't you tell us about yourself? Why don't you tell us about monstrosities, uh, the concept of your game? Break it down for us. Sure. Uh, hey, everybody. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Um, I'm Free Gas, or Jonah, uh, part of the Monstrosities team and sort of one of the leaders of our development work and uh, work very closely with our voxel artists and voxel developers. Uh, Monstrosities is a project that has been in development for quite some time now. Uh, we're, we're reaching our, our birthday quite soon. Um, and really what it is is an MMO blockchain gaming experience based in the sandbox that uh, we've been building alongside our community for quite some time. And I'm, I'm excited to tell you more about it and, and kind of jump into some some of those details. Awesome. Now I'm a, I'm an MMO player myself. I played MMO for, for years and years and years. So I'm super excited for this. Uh, I love the sandbox as a whole, uh, as well. So this is really interesting for me. This is something I'm really looking forward to, uh, getting into and playing and, and trying myself. So I want to ask you, why did you choose the sandbox? What, what about the sandbox made you say, yo, we gotta, we gotta go that route. Yeah. So the sandbox, uh, particularly a year ago, but even today, you know, the sandbox is one of the more accessible um, open metaverses or open kind of platforms that exist in terms of figuring out your place in it, SDKs, building and really enabling that community driven gameplay. Uh, we also like it, it seems in particular to be further along uh, in the idea of interoperable gaming, right? Of course, mm -hmm. you can't necessarily do anything in the sandbox and then and flip it over to some other, you know, gated platform. But games within the sandbox likely will have a lot of interoperable opportunities, right? I think right. every developer will will have the opportunity to kind of allow access or not to, to, to the broader sandbox world. So that's really great. And I think a good first step, you know, I think, you know, generally one of the great opportunities of blockchain gaming is interoperable gaming where your skin in, in game a works in game b and you know what you earn elsewhere can can help you um in some other you know game or not help you but just make you look really unique in that game right so that, that that's that's another really appealing aspect of sandbox uh, and also just how focused they are on developing tools for uh creators on their platform and helping really enable those experiences rather than just saying, here's the SDK, make it happen. Right. And that's, that's the one thing I love about the sandbox. I feel like it's like a true uh, multiverse where everything you own, you own it. You want to play this game, you have your skin or whatever it is. And I, I like that about it. That's what I like. I like about the sandbox too. And I think those are good points that you made. Uh, WT, what do you think about the, uh, the whole sandbox experience and the, and, and all that stuff he was talking about? Yeah. Anybody that has been, following us or in our community knows uh we're absolutely huge on the sandbox game there was a couple of reasons why i started looking at monstrosities a year ago one was uh the meta key like my little thing up there and uh the sandbox game and anything in the sandbox game i always say it, it has no matter what it is it, no matter what it is it has a legit chance because the sandbox game is just this massive marketing hub i think people overlook that about the the sandbox of its true value and it's got all these other cool features to it and everything, but it really brings a lot of the NFT metaverse together. And so if you have any land there at all whatsoever, you're gonna get seen. And so by you guys being on there, 
and having this interoperability chance with all these other projects there, it just, it really gets that whole network effect going and I'm absolutely huge on network. That was the biggest thing I learned about 2021 is networking is key. Yeah. And I like that you guys picked the sandbox and who knows where it goes. They, down the road, this is all very new and th things are developing over time. It could interoperability uh, have a chance to go into other platforms as well. We don't know yet. Right, right, right. And uh, that's the thing. So I like, I, like we said, we talked about the sandbox and stuff, and I like how you're putting your game first. So right now you're putting your game first, kind of like the play to earn um, secondary, I guess, if you want to call it that way. And I like that. I like that. I think the game should always be the focus on anything. Uh, the product is is what's important. So um, I like that. So you're focusing on the game first. Um, so uh so has the sandbox given you any potential timelines like when it's a go is it going to be this year is it next year like what are do you got is there anything you can share about that or how does that work not 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 nothing specific but we we in particular have not been told on this date there's there's this mm -hmm. opportunity so on and so forth for for broader gameplay i know that that their alphas have been really successful and they're they're looking to introduce not only new, you know, beta testing, but also a lot of new mechanics that that can really kind of level up the player experience. What what we're trying to do is get some of our experiences into the next um, round of gameplay, right? The next alpha, beta, whatever they call it, uh, having one of our worlds there uh, cool. as both a social hub and a gameplay experience. But that that is that will be an ongoing conversation. No promises, <laughs> but we. We do have experiences ready to to offer, so we're hoping to get folks into our world as soon as we can. Nice, very nice. Now let's speak about the game a little bit. Let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the stuff. So you guys have four factions. Um, is there going to be rivalries between them? What can you tell us about? I know there's like air, fire, earth, and so tell us about tell us about the factions. Tell us about the story. The the is there going to be rivalries? The history, the lore. Uh, what do you want to tell us about the factions? Yeah, absolutely. So the monstrosities is is based on these four these four uh, factions of of species, so to speak, uh, and they 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 mirror the 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 elemental uh, the four elemental whatevers uh, earth, water, uh, wind, and fire. And what the the lore really starts with you know us being humans, right? We're we're doing our thing. We are not taking care of the world, right? We're not contributing to, to the environment in, in many ways. We end up uh, creating some new substances that help power the world, end up polluting it, and we all get turned into these monsters. And, um, you know, as part of that, we're all, we're all transformed into these different beasts based on what we were doing at the time of our infection. We, we took on properties relative, relevant to a certain element. And as happens in a lot of societies, you start to kind of congregate with folks that are like you, right? You know, a water a water monster can live underwater, and others can't. So you spend more time with other water monsters, right? And so in in that in that way, these four you know people from all over the world turn into these four factions, and they build these cities, these monstrosities, right? And so that is the anchor of the game are going to be these four massive cities that mirror those those four elements. Very cool. I like uh, that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to keep on monologuing on the game, but always yeah. happy to keep it on track with. No, get, uh, go go for it. Let's hear about it. I want to hear all about it. I want to hear more about it. Yeah. So you had asked about if there's going to be rivalries or anything like that. So part of you know part of an MMO, right? This this massive experience for anybody is is to try and scratch every itch you can. And so what we hope to accomplish is enabling any gameplay experience one would want. If you're more of a peaceful resource collection, city builder kind of guy, we want something for you. If you're a PVE, kill a bunch of monsters, we want something for you. If you're PVP, ideally, we have something for you. You know, we're still figuring out what will be viable um, in this end game that, that, that Sandbox ends up allowing, but we want all of these things to be options, right? And so, uh, we obviously want rivalry. We also want teamwork. We want we want anyone to get that feeling and experience they want. So rivalries will likely take the form of competitions, right? Of course, if there's PvP, like, what? How? How, how much more? Uh, can, how, how much further can you get with a rivalry? But even <laughs> on like the city builder stuff, right? Well, you know, in a perfect world, we'll be running competitions of which uh, not just which person, but which faction can do the best over X period of time and create these 
these different uh, levels of rivalries, right? Whether it's leaderboard type challenges or actual in-game competition uh, in real time. So absolutely, we want rivalry. We also want other things, right? We want we want everyone to be able to play this game and have a good time. Yeah, I like that. I like, so that actually leads me to, to some other questions I wanted to ask. You said PvP. Is there going to be modes like, uh, you know, uh, is there going to be like raid bosses? Is there going to be like, you know, when you say PvP, is it would be like capture the flag, king of the hill, just, you know, arena sty- type of battles. Do you have any idea how you plan on doing that um, w- within the game? Like I say, is there going to be like big raid bosses? Like, you know, if you're played like World of Warcraft or something like that, there's those big raids or, you know, dungeon crawling. What, what's your vision? What's your view on the actual gameplay uh, within it? Right, so we do want to enable as like as many of those types of gaming formats as we can. Um, we we're still looking to see the limitations of multiplayer in terms of how massive a game event can be, right, and what we can really allow for in sandbox. But absolutely, raid bosses. We, we we're having a lot of fun dreaming up the different bosses and how they look in voxel form, and and, and you know what kind of mechanics they, they may be able to have, right, in terms of of uh, figuring out how to beat them. But, uh, you know, absolutely raid, raid bosses, capture the flag in any kind of non-violent um, competitive games. We do want to include maybe some racing, right, you know, just a platformer of racing, those sorts of things. And if, it's a, if we're able to, in some sort of controlled environment, just real mano a mano, you know, <laughs> fighting one another, That'd be great. Uh, obviously, there's implications of that that we need to work through around, like, what do you win when you kill someone? What do they lose? Do they lose anything, right? There's a lot of broader rules that are particularly difficult to manage in an interoperable metaverse that I think Sandbox needs to work out. So we really know what we can and cannot do. Um, right. And maybe and maybe they let you, you know, set more unique rules for your own environment, but that, that is still not totally clear for us. Which this, right. uh, that's another thing I wanted to ask. Actually, there's one more thing I want to ask. Um, I don't want to cut you out there. Sorry, buddy, but it's like, no, it's so the thing with, it's like, you're, you talked about the sandbox and you're like, yeah, it depends on what. So is it because you're part of the sandbox is it, can they hinder you in any ways or things that you can't do that you want to do? Or basically is it, you know, that you can, you have a vision and even though you're part of the sandbox, you can do everything you want to do kind of thing. Yeah, it's a good question. I wouldn't use the term hindering because we're we're building with them, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like we built somewhere else and now we're trying to migrate and we're like, oh crap, this thing we used to do, we can't do anymore. Like mm-hmm. this isn't great. We're we're trying our best to just build within the confines of what Sandbox allows to begin with and and be creative around that. Um, and so I wouldn't say that we've been hindered in our development by any means, but absolutely we are dependent on and eager to learn about the new things that they introduce, uh, which they introduce new mechanics regularly, right? But um, we can't necessarily assume that something that doesn't exist today will exist tomorrow right. as it relates to their, their SDKs or, or like, you know, the kind of gameplay stuff that, they, that they'll allow or that can be facilitated on the sandbox. So we certainly are dependent on them and we can't really just do anything we want. Right. Um, but, you know, it's been they've been really communicative and it's been easy to build in that environment, knowing what we can do and, and leaving some room to upgrade and update as new things may come out. Yeah, the no, sandbox it's game, it, uh, <laughs> it, it has its set parameter rules and I, I have a little bit of experience with it. And we just recently went through a, an event with this guy named Tomahawk and uh, he created this whole event and he came up with some pretty creative stuff. And from what I've seen and read, even with the limitations that the sandbox has, people are finding creative ways to get around the rules, which is kind of cool. And it's actually, they're, they're not like mad about it. They're like, oh, well, cool. You know, maybe everyone seems to kind of be helping each other. So I think uh, with the, the sandbox game that you're in, it seems to me like it's very PVE oriented with what their rule set is. And it's a little bit harder to do the PVP aspect Somewhat, because you got to be really creative with it. Do you see if you guys could do whatever you want to do? Would you be like, all right, we're gonna go fifty percent PVE and fifty percent PVP, or do you feel like maybe you guys would be more of seventy five percent PVE and twenty five percent PVP if you could do whatever it is that you want to do? You know, that's a good question. I think something of that nature we might even put up to the community. So, you know, one of the things about monstrosities that 
you know, as our community grows, I hope becomes a really awesome part of our development process is that owners of these monsters, players of the game have the, the say in the way the lore goes, the gameplay develops, those sorts of things. And they, they, they really have ownership of the IP of the game. And so in terms of how things evolve over time, that would be something that hopefully the community stresses where, you know, there, someone puts up a vote. There's not enough PVP. Like let's, let's, let's have the devs focus on that. Right. And we, we use that to drive that direction in those percentages. I think at a start, we would probably want to, I, you know, the question is where does PVP start and end, right? Cause some might argue that a, a competitive platformer or racing is not necessarily PVP because it's not actually, there's no violence involved, right? It depends on how you define it. Um, if you considered anything that is multiplayer versus single player in its competitive nature, I would say 50, 50. If we were talking like player versus player combat, that would be a smaller percentage. Um, but again, that is certainly not possible at this stage, right? right. Uh, and so that that would that's more of like a speculative. If it ever existed, we would enable it. Um, we're certainly leaving room in our world to build that type of experience if it if it becomes very possible. Um, but it, it's not something that's that's been developed yet, just because of those limitations. Right, and that actually speaking of you saying you have room in your world, you guys have a six by six lot, which is which is massive. That's pretty big. Six by six is is huge. Oh, um, now, how much gameplay does that give you? And and you said you know you you want to le leave a little bit of room. Does that save you any room, or are you guys saving any room for like future levels content? Like you said, PvP. Is there anything you're kind of putting aside, kind of okay for future plans, maybe an expansion or something? Or are you going six, which is massive, massive? You're gonna go six by six right off the go and just kind of rip it. Yeah, it's a good, six by six is just enormous, and it, it the scale of it really gets clearer and clearer when you start to you know think about how you can use the underground and the sky and, right. and really create this. Just it's just it is enormous, and so uh, you know of course with our city, you know the water cities under large portions underwater, right? Um, you know with with these different cities, the, the elevation is is included in them, of course, but there's a lot of extra space, and and in the space between those cities as well, right? You know we're there's a lot of environment and we always want environment. You don't want like constant, you know, right. city action all the time. There's got to be a bit of a travel aspect coming across random things. But with that, we're leaving a lot of room for upgrades, right? It, we would love to, to surprise and delight players with uh, the opening of a new, of a new cave, right? Of a new dungeon, of a new, of a new challenge, right? We, we want this to be a, a progressive game. We don't, we don't want you to get everything you get on day one is what you get for the rest of rest of time. That, that that's not really fun. Right. But it also means that you have to wait longer to play your game because to build out everything you could possibly build out on a six by six is crazy, right? There's so much room. So, uh, you know, we want to come out with all of these different cities and, and that, and, you know, a robust amount of gameplay, but absolutely there's plenty of room to introduce many more things and, and keep the, uh, the excitement going for, for a continued gameplay. Yeah. And it's awesome. I can't, I can't uh, even, I, I was thinking about that like what what percentage do you think a city takes up in a six by six like two percent one percent so we we are giving our cities two by two plots oh uh, but they don't like when we when it, like environment creeps into the edges of the two by two right they don't like they don't um they don't take up a full two by two but we think of them as two by twos so the cities themselves are also massive you can't really see from one end to the other uh, in the city like there, there's plenty to explore within each city let alone outside of them um and so uh we do build them on two by twos there's plenty of like environmental encroachment on the edges of those two by twos and like i said even within those cities we don't really capture the full scale top to bottom of what can be in those spaces obviously we don't want to crowd a space we, and we wouldn't like fill it to the brim but you know, the water city has plenty of sky room, right? And there could be, you know, it's development is fun too. And so even if, if even if something is introduced and it can always be taken away. So even if there was like a a week long air assault of water city and we built this air platform above the city for a specific game that, you know, was there for a while and then disappears, right? There's always room to introduce uh, elements uh, into into the cities as well, but yeah, two by two is our base building space, and I mean they're they're massive. 
Yeah, we're, that's big. <laughs> we're, 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 we're planning to start rolling out some sneak peeks of, of, of like the water city and in, in video format. And then they're, they're insane. I nice. think people are going to love it. Nice dude. Cause right now I believe you have two of the four cities done, right? Two of the four. Um, that's right. That's right. So is yeah, there a time up water? Hopefully soon. Nice. So what's your time frame to get all four of them done? You'd say like, you're almost done all four. You're kind of working at one at a time. You're working at all four kind of like gra- gradually. Um, yeah. Do you have a time frame when you're done all four or just kind of just working as we go? We're, I'd say working as we go based on our, our, our build times for the first two, I'd say we're, you know, quite a few months out from being done, done. Um, but thankfully, and also sadly, right. Sandbox's timeframes help facilitate that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I, it, I haven't touched on it because it doesn't really bother us because we're having such a good time building this thing. But, you know, we haven't even sold out our our gameplay collection. And I think part of that is because people have patience in saying, you know, I can't even play this game yet. Why would I why would I collect this character just yet? Which makes a lot of sense. Right. And so it's, you know, uh, I believe that we are building at a pretty good pace with Sandbox. Um, But we we certainly are uh, have quite a few months ahead of us in terms of building the next two cities. Uh, I'd say probably each city is about two to three months of build. Um, and that includes uh, integrating some gameplay, right? The cities are coming with some sort of gamification, right? It's not just a social hub. There's something, some challenge you can do, something that you can actually have fun doing as well. So it's not just, you know, a few months for, a place to stand around and explore. There's actually right. interactive gameplay to, to enjoy. Um, but each city will include that social hub as well, right? Places to just meet other people, socialize, you know, bank stand. We're talking about MMO related things. Uh, so yeah. Have you, I've seen a, uh, I've seen a little bit of, I think it was the air city I seen a while ago and it looked absolutely amazing for what I, just a little bit that I got to see. And I, I, I kind of wanted to, add on to what you were saying about the sandbox and, and the timelines and everything i have i'm in several other projects in the sandbox team and they're all they're all being handcuffed right now and they're all going with the same mindset but it's like well let's just use this time to build and make our game that much even better and i don't think people realize the potential of sandbox i mean there's some but i think a lot of people don't realize the potential when they actually open up those floodgates and all these games are available i think people are going to be blown away and you're going to have these different tiers of Okay, what can I go play? And your your Snoop Dogg metaverse, your Dead Mouse metaverse, all those big names, uh, Walking Dead, those are going to be really hard to get assets in because we know the NFT space, it's sky high to get into these premium assets. And so there's going to be a niche of people that just want to go in and play. And I, I really believe any game like yours that has put in the time and the development and has an actually really good game, it's gonna suck in these niche of people that wanna play, but can't afford these like crazy, crazy thousands of dollars of prices. And so I personally am gonna pick up a cup. There's a couple uh, monstrosities out there. Like it's reasonable, 30 bucks to go get them on the secondary market. And I'm gonna be hitting up my, my, my relative young men in my family and even some of the girls that like this kind of stuff. And I'm gonna give them out as Christmas presents like, hey, here you go. Let me teach you how to make a wallet. It's a great way to get people that are not in this into this. Like as a, as a Christmas gift, like, let me show you how to set up a wallet. Let me give you the basic safety stuff. Hey, by the way, here's an NFT. Go play this and check it out and tell me what you think. And I think you guys are positioned with you're building these four giant cities. Cause I've seen them. They're huge. People don't understand what a one by one is like, let alone two by two, just inside your giant world. And I think uh, with the whole Minecraft era, Roblox, tying in the sandbox with this, with this metaverse, I think you guys are positioned to do some really good things as long as you keep building the way you're building. Absolutely. We're really excited. And like I said, getting getting one of our city experiences into even you know an earlier beta or something for people to, to get a taste of sooner, I think will be pretty eye-opening because it is... It is amazing, and 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 Water City is is truly beautiful. It's actually made us think about reskinning, like redoing parts of Air to keep up because Water City, <laughs> you know, Water City is so fun. There's so many elements to it, right? There's a lot of like underwater experience and all of this that that created just this beautiful landscape. And so, um, that's the one that we would probably want to push forward, especially as it starts to wrap up. So, 
uh, you know, keep an eye out on our, our, our Twitter and, and discord for, for some of those sneak peeks. Cause it's, it's, I mean, it's truly gorgeous and uh, you know, shout out to the, to our voxel team, Arconics for, for working on it. Cause they're, they're doing some really good stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm super excited to try this uh, out as well. I'm like I said earlier, I'm an MMO player. Uh, have you played other MMOs? Do you, have you been kind of like? Uh, is there any ideas that you're kind of trying to? You know, you're like, oh, I like this idea. I want to see if I can put this in. What what MMOs have you played before? I I am. Uh, I was pretty much raised on on RuneScape. I uh, oh, nice, my parents yeah. were a little tougher on me, so I couldn't pay that monthly fee for World of Warcraft. And RuneScape had a phenomenal free to play version. Yep. And I spent a lot of my younger years playing that. And some of my older years, too. I, I, I think RuneScape was phenomenal in its leveling system. And it's just addictive way of, of creating community and, and really just convincing you to grind out so much time just to get good at a certain skill. And so that's, that's where my, my love for the space really began. Um, how that relates to Sandbox is interesting, right? Sandbox does have skills. There's um, only a few of them relative to RuneScape, which had, you know, just this massive array of them. I have no idea what it's at now. But uh, uh, finding ways to incorporate skill enhancement is really important to me because that's something that I was just deadly focused on Mm -hmm. uh, playing MMOs in the past, right? And so whether that is literally burning hours to gain experience to level up, which is not necessarily what I see being possible, or it is spending a lot of time to earn attachments that boost those skills which is more i think the speed of sandbox uh is going to be really important to me right like and then figuring out the 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 economics of that right we can even you know this even kind of lends itself into that play to earn space quite a bit but how do we make it so that you know maxing out your you know any any one skill is pretty hard to do and, and takes a bit of time versus just like 45 minutes in and you're just a totally maxed player Right. That's, how does that relate to buying things and, you know, right. Using, that's, uh, that's what I was going to ask too, is like the leveling system and uh, the gearing system. Is there a level cap? How are you going to get the gear going? Is the experience, how, do, how does that all fit into the game? Right. So that is one of those things where we will be dependent on how sandbox ends up deciding to go. Right. Because at the end of the day, we want, we want to introduce a leveling system that you could technically use. Right. In, the Snoop Dogg universe. I don't know what you might need skill wise in that universe, but it would be cool if we're all playing the same game. Right. Um, And so we've yet to see what that means. You know, as of right now, I believe skill advancement will probably be through items rather than time spent. uh, Right. Or, you know, at least time spent getting items versus time spent, just getting experience to gain Mm -hmm. levels. Um, we have yet to see, right? You know, if, if Sandbox came out with a SDK around a leveling system, I would certainly look into it because that would be fun. Um, but yeah, we, we do need to figure out the, the economics of getting your gear, getting your skill boosters, all of those different bits, uh, particularly as, you know, we, you know, progress through our builds and get closer to release. I will say that I don't, I'm not, I wouldn't be confident right now saying that that's all figured out. Well, I, I'll say it's not figured out, but I wouldn't be confident figuring it out right now, knowing that Sandbox could make a lot of changes before right. they finally release. And if we built that that model today, I'm confident it wouldn't be the best possible implementation by the time that this is, by the time Sandbox right. is ready for uh, massive gameplay. Right. I like, I honestly, I think this sounds great. Like I said, I've said a few times here, I love the MMO aspect. I've been waiting for something like this, uh, where we can get in and kind of do our thing. I'm super, uh, I, I love the concept of all the four factions, all that stuff. I absolutely love that. Uh, but I want to know how the play to earn, how is the play to earn going to come into this? How does that work? Yeah, it's a good question. And so, you know, as you mentioned at the start, it's not something that we've like introduced yet or, or sort of pumped out to the community as like a way of getting interest early. Uh, that's because there's nothing to do with it, right? And and I think there's examples in and out of gaming where if you have a lot of faucets and no sinks for your token, uh-huh. then your token really loses its purpose and value. And we don't mm-hmm. need that. We're not here to create this weird speculative token market. We want this token to be 
very important to the game itself and something that you don't want to sell. We want you to spend it. We want you to buy that next piece of armor. Uh, we, you know, obviously, play to earn is amazing because you can earn, you can, you can get better armor, you can earn more coin, you can make real money doing these things. But there will not be a successful play to earn game if everyone is playing it to make that money and to just sell the coin yeah. as they get it, because then it 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 unravels to zero. We need, we want people to earn their their tokens and actually spend them on the game yeah. instead of just cashing out every you know two weeks or whatever and right. so and so that that's what's important to us so how does play to earn come into this is we want to really build a compelling experience that you want to play to have fun and then oh my god it turns out that through this gameplay we're getting tokens that we can choose to do what we want with right whether that is to sell them buy that next set of armor, whatever it may be. Our intention around play to earn is to make sure that folks are, are, are accruing tokens or in-game currency, you know, through their efforts, right? So through completing missions, through winning tournaments, like, you know, we're, we want to have action level competitions where rather than kind of this, a, a, a more fluid in-game mechanic, the treasury says, you know, in this month, Whoever, you know, whichever faction has, you know, whatever, the, the fastest time to clear this dungeon, all faction holders will get X coin, right? As a, as a faction Ooh. level tournament win, right? I Stuff like, like that. that we'd really want to do, right? We, we want That's the awesome. way this, this token operates to be an in-game mechanic and be this reward, reward tool for broader competitions. And, you know, we really only want to introduce it when you have a good reason to, to, to use it. Right, whether it's to buy in-game items, whether it's to buy, you know, real life swag. I don't know. But you need those things. Mm -hmm. Any any anyone who's come out with a token without a reason to use that token has come out with something that's just virtually worthless. Right? I agree hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I I didn't want to get too extreme there. Maybe it's not worthless, but like there's some intention for the token yeah. everyone is aware of and they're holding it for that for that. Knowing right. that that intention, right? I think Alluvium Dow is a good example of no game, but the Alluvium token has a lot of purpose um, in their DAO and, and pre game. Um, right. And Monstrosities, owning the monster is your DAO access rather than the, the, the in game token, so it's a bit different. But all that to be said, play to earn is where we want to be, but we really want the game to be play for fun and you're earning. Uh, right. And as you earn, you get to choose whether that's real money or advancement in the game. Uh, so that, that, that has to just come later for it to be a, of a more, to, for it to be more organic in its, in its, uh, adoption. Yeah, I agree. So a lot of games focus on the play to earn first and the game's kind of secondary. And to me, I, I don't feel like that is the right plan. Now, like you said, you have to have a good game. Uh, if you have a good game, then, you know, um, people will want to play and earn rather than people just playing for the token. They don't care about the game. So you want them to care about the right. game to earn the token. And I, I like that. I like that you, uh, you, you're, you're saying it like that, uh, for sure. Uh, WT, you got another question? Uh, yes. Yeah, add on real quick. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely think you're going the right direction with that. The team, the team is uh, some veterans in the space, and they get that. They understand it. You guys have been around almost for a full year with this project. Uh, you had ample opportunities probably to sell that land for massive, massive gains back in like October when all that nuts stuff was going on. And you didn't. You stuck with it, and you, you brought in some more talent to build. I like that. And it takes a lot of moxie and guts just to keep going forward with your vision. I, I think that's absolutely great. Uh, uh, one thing to mention is there, there's pets that come with these heroes, which I think is pretty cool. I know that there hasn't been a lot of uh, talk about what those will do exactly. I'm sure you guys got some plans. Uh, can you elaborate on that at all? Or is it just going to be a nice little trinket to have with you? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, I I, I think at their at the very least they're they're a companion to to travel with right across across this land and and to use in that way. Um, we have ideas around them that we we are interested in sussing out a bit, but they they probably require enhancements to uh, the sandbox SDK. Uh, you know, one fun thing is, you know, to, to help enable them almost as like an extension of the game because 8,000 units is not exactly a massive 
player base is to find you know ways to to create almost mini games where your your monster is the main character of the story or sorry your companion or your your animal is the main character of that story and there's like these sort of like animal esque you know races and stuff or maybe the only way to enter races is to be on the back of your of your companion right and so we want to in, we want to integrate them beyond just being that trinket um but uh it's 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 yet to be seen how best to do so uh but absolutely they're gonna they have to be part of the game and and they have to be a fun part of it too so more to come on that for sure well another thing is uh we just saw lately we were, we were tweeting about houses uh is that an upcoming feature uh in the game what can you tell us man tell us about these houses is uh, you know yeah so the the homes that have been leaked are are homes in water city um I will say as they exist today, they are, you know, interactive and, and, and can be, you know, accessed. Uh, they're not necessarily owned by individual monsters. Uh, that would be very cool if Sandbox could allow mm -hmm. um, customization of space on land that you don't own. And absolutely, if we're able to do that, we would figure it out. Uh, but for now, those, those, uh, those images are, are leaks of pieces of Water City. Uh, I think they're, you know, as standalone assets, they're they're phenomenally built. I think they're beautiful. And, and when they come together in the city, it's it's really spectacular. So you'll see quite a few more of those. I couldn't help it. When I seen them, I, right away, I was like, <laughs> are they going to sell land within land? That was my first thought, man. So you got you to, gotta, if, what, if, yes, if no, can, maybe? If we can enable land on land, we're not going to sell it. Every monster will just have access based on Ooh. owning a monster already. But Ooh. that isn't possible right now. So that's not me saying because no, you I have know. a monster, you get land. I know. I'm not saying that. But I hear you. if it was possible, <laughs> that monster would be that. Ownership. Right. I think the theme is you guys have a lot of plans, some talent on your team, but you're just waiting for the sandbox, which a lot of these companies are. A lot of these other companies and projects are. They're, they're in the same boat as you. So... Boy, that kind of gets me excited now. That gets me excited, and especially with this low entry point. I, even it, the, even the mint, even the mint's a low entry point. Honestly, 0 0.07. That's not that bad. And your secondary market, oh man, it's criminal right now. It's criminal. <laughs> it is, and you know, it's. I think it's a function of of just our approach to to development and to releasing the game, and and also you know partially sandbox, partially the time we launched. Right? There's there's a lot of factors that go into to where a project is today, and we we try not to to dwell on it too much and just, you know, keep building and delivering. But uh, I couldn't agree with you more that it's all criminally undervalued. <laughs> I, I think it's going to change though. I think it's going to change. I really do. When Sandbox opens up some gates, man, if you, if you didn't get in now, you're, you're going to be kicking yourself. Any, any of these projects, I think, I mean, not all, but a lot of them, a lot of them. This, this is the, this is the time, man, where you plant your seeds. I, what do you think, Bruno? <laughs> I, I agree. And I think, uh, and, and like I was saying earlier, I think we, we're needing an MMO like this. Sandbox is going to be massive. Uh, I love, I love talking to, to, to people that are, that want to build on the sandbox. I, I do think it's, it's going to be huge. Sandbox is going to be huge. And uh, I can't wait to get uh, some of these uh, monsters and monstrosities and just absolutely start tearing it up. You know, uh, we got to make our squad WT. What do you think? And I like what you I like what you said about the the Christmas presents or like birthday presents and stuff. Uh, that's you know that's you know buy them a couple of uh, monstrosities, hand them out, get a squad together. I like that. I like that idea. Yeah, you, they won't know. Just tell them it was like three hundred bucks that yeah. you bought it for. <laughs> like, wow, thanks, Uncle. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I, I love it. I think that's a, that's a, that's awesome. So yeah, I, I like I said, I think you you guys have a really nice thing built uh, going on. I uh, can't wait to see the uh, the future builds and leaks and all that stuff. Um, basically, the last thing I want to ask you is that you know once once the the floodgates open once sandbox opens up uh how is your plan to get the next you know batch of players in the new blood the new people in what's what's the plan to get more eyes because that's the hard part in this space right now is you know is, is there's there's a lot of projects out there and how do you say hey come look over here uh what are your plans for that right and so that the, the gaming experience is what's going to get people to stay right and so as sandbox opens and all of the folks just like us who are building and building and waiting we're all going to be, we're going to have something playable on day one. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of folks that are getting involved on, on everyone's land. And so our hope is to start establishing relationships and partnerships with other landowners, other experience creators to, to, you know, cross pollinate, right. And, and, you know, make sure that 
monster holders are learning about other fun games. Those holders are learning about monstrosities and let them decide where they want to spend their time playing, right? So there's definitely a big focus on getting sandbox gamers to try out monstrosities, right? And and work with other projects to to get them to try it. You know, one idea is to build a bit of a, um, oh, the word is escaping me right now, but uh, uh, a location in the sandbox game where different games can kind of create and have an outpost for a period of time to have like this access point, even without a monstrosity, Ooh, just nice. to kind of get a flavor for what's going on. Um, what is this word? It's every country has one in every Amb- country. ambassador, ambassador, uh, ambassadorship, yeah. or uh, I think it's a, <laughs> like a I can't consulate think of or something. But yeah, yeah like a, 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 a building in a space where all these different, you know, other other communities can have like an access point to the game and and just sort of facilitate that interoperable gameplay to an extent. So that that's something we absolutely want to do. You know, outside of that, we're going to continue to try and excite the broader market through our socials about the things we're building and what's coming. But we do believe that, you know, the folks that we can get involved the fastest are sandbox gamers who are, who, as soon as they hit the ground running, are going to want to get a taste of everything and find Mm -hmm. their niche. And if we can build a compelling experience when they find and try monstrosities, they'll stay. And so that's, that's what we're, we definitely want to, to do. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm excited. I'll be definitely playing it uh, when it comes out, and uh, yeah, I'll be streaming it. You know, we do uh, we do a Twitch stream. I'll be streaming it, and uh, we got a lot of MMO players. We got a lot of uh, NFT collectors, and uh, you know, it, I think it'll be a fun time. Man. I think it's gonna be good. I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out uh, for sure. Uh, WT, is there anything you wanted to say on the way out? Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on and hanging out with us. It was a blast. Uh, mm. I really like how you guys have just stuck with it and like. You've done the right things. I know it's not sexy. It doesn't grab a lot of people, but you guys are doing the right things. And uh, I like everything, what you said about the tokenomics, how it's, it's, it's pointless and worthless to do it now versus building the right thing and come out with it. And uh, my hat's off to you, man. I, that, that's why I get behind certain projects is when I see that, because eventually the hype and the crap coins and stuff, it gets flushed out and you have the real deal stuff. And uh, I, I'm, I'm very interested to see where you guys go and I'm rooting for you. So uh, I'll be watching and uh, I'm in the community a little bit. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to see what you guys come out with. That is awesome. That's great. And I appreciate you guys having me on. I, I, I appreciate the enthusiasm, you know, love to have you both as players and, and contributors, right? You know, once you have a monster, you're, you're a contributor, whether you like it or not. Uh, and and that's and that's something that that we're we're excited about and, and look forward to seeing really flesh out as more people uh, join the monstrosities uh, experience. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be uh, definitely gonna be picking some up for sure. And uh, is there anything you want to say on the way out, uh, free guys? Anything you want to say? Anything you want the community to know that we didn't talk about? Anything at all? The floor is yours. Say what you got to say, my friend. Sure. Yeah. You know, I always like to to. to thank the rest of the team that isn't on with me, right? Because we do have a team that has stuck through quite a bit. All the folks that are, you know, on uh, the community side, the social side, our Voxel team, our Connex, everyone, everyone's doing quite a bit of work. And, and I, you know, I really appreciate them. I think they appreciate me. We're, we're, all, we're all putting in our, our best effort. So thanks to everybody who's on the Monstrosities team building with me. Uh, thanks to you guys and everyone who's listening because, you know, I, I think Monstrosities is, is really cool. And as we start to leak some of these experiences and, Really hope that we get Water City into one of these uh, betas because I think people will get a real kick out of it um, and get really excited with us. So uh, really just grateful for everyone who's been building alongside us and and for folks like you who give us a, an opportunity to talk about what we're doing. Oh, thanks for coming on. And like I said, you're, you you know what? You, uh, you seem like a very genuine, amazing guy. Uh, and I like it. I like it a lot. I like the uh, project. I like the game. I like the uh, the the uh, idea behind the game, the MMO side, the fact that you're on sandbox, you know, this is, uh, this is going to be a beauty for sure. So thank you for coming on, uh, you know, and giving us your time and, and, and getting a chance for us to get to know the game and, and hear all about it. So I really do appreciate that as well. Um, WT, you know, always killing it. That mustache is getting thicker by the week. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate talking with you, with you guys. That's uh, it's always a pleasure. So, uh, that is it for this one, guys. Uh, make sure you check. I'm going to put the socials below for monstrosities, the discord, the Twitter, all that stuff. Check them out. Click the links. Uh, and don't forget guys, click the, click the like and sub button, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Uh, and what faction, if you were to play, which one would you go air, water, fire, 
or uh, Earth. And uh, again, thank you for coming on and chatting. Uh, and uh, we are out of here. Uh, we will talk to you guys soon. We're out of here. Peace.